to kind of work on a film that is so integral to the Marvel universe, yes. um, uh, what kind of responsibility uh, do you feel for it? And was there like a little baton kind of passed? Was there a ceremony which was given to you? Where well, you, were, you know, I, I definitely had a long talk with Sam Raimi at a party before I started. Uh, and that was, it was actually, I actually spoke to him and really, I knew him, he was always a very nice guy. I came by the set when they were filming uh, Spider-Man 3, so I, I got a taste of it uh, in, from that perspective. And I was in Daredevil, and I had even been, had a very small role in, in, in Batman Forever a long time ago. So I've been exposed to it. Uh, what was interesting was having the opportunity to be the first Marvel Studios movie because there had been a lot of complaining done by people involved with other franchises that the studio system didn't really respect the source material. And certainly the fans had felt that way. And I had experienced that to some extent on the movies I had been in. I remember they had wanted to hire Mickey Rourke to play Matt Murdock's dad in Daredevil, but they didn't want to hire him. And I was like, what a great bit of casting that would be to be his father uh, his, his dad, the, the washed up boxer, it would have been a wonderful, wonderful role. Uh, but the studio system didn't really permit for that. And, and then they would change characters and villains and things like that. So here's the first time we we're going to do a Marvel movie by Marvel, where all the movies occupied one universe. And, and I got to bring my sense of humor. And it, it was always, Marvel has always been an irreverent brand, in, at least in the comic books. And I was able to bring some of my sensibility and my humor to that. And what's interesting for me now is that Iron Man 1 really has spawned the reality for all the other franchises, and Iron Man 2 reinforces that. And it's going to be interesting to see how Thor brings magic into that world and the supernatural, because we kept it very in, in and of the real world, as the comics had been when I was growing up. That was set, that was New York City. I grew up in Queens. I saw the Willits Point train yards in that comic book I was reading, you know, in that, in that issue of, of, uh, of the Hulk. Uh, it wasn't Gotham City. It wasn't, um, you know, the Daily Planet. It was, it was, you know, it was real stuff that I grew up around. So we try to keep it in the real world. As these other films come out, I'm curious to see how Marvel handles that because it's all, they're all essentially follow-ups, if not sequels, to Iron Man. Speaking of realness, um, the, to work with Robert uh, yeah. again, and 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 it seems like you guys have such a really great. Because I saw you guys at Comic Con, and so yes. there's this almost like unspoken language that you guys have. Yes. And so, is it is it functional or is it very dysfunctional at this point? Like, are you kind of like, is there do you, is there bickering or is it a very like? Oh, yeah, there's everything. Course. Really, there's everything. I mean, you have a very deep bond from us both coming of age in our in the second half of our lives and our careers uh, because of this collaboration. I mean, he was, he went from unhirable to probably, if not one of the, then the biggest movie star in the world right now. And I went from a guy who was doing comedies or independent films to somebody who I could essentially, if I show an interest in a project, that project will get made. And that's, you know, something we both appreciate, especially because the business is changing a lot and, and belts are being tightened everywhere in the, in the film business because of piracy. I mean, that's, that's uh, affected things terribly. A lot less movies are being made. People don't realize it. But, but you know, when, they, when something isn't paid for, that takes money away from the profits that these big studios have, and they make less movies. I mean, it's a direct relationship. I see it. And to be able to make movies in this uh, very um, competitive atmosphere because of the success of the first film, we have a bond through that. Now, of course, we're like brothers where, you know, you'll fight over what song you play next in the set. If you know two brothers in a band together, there's, there's all of that that goes on. But there's tremendous love and affection and respect that we share for one another. If I can quickly ask about casting Mickey Rourke and Scarlett. Yeah. And, yeah uh... Scarlett and Mickey came on board here uh, as two additions to the cast for Iron Man 2. Mickey Rourke was somebody we chased after quite hard. I really liked him in Sin City and in The Wrestler, and I thought that he would balance out the cast very well. He needed somebody very powerful to match the screen presence of Robert Downey. And so I went after him hard, and then Robert even uh, uh, reinforced that message when they were both touring as part of the awards circuit when he was nominated for The Wrestler and Robert for Tropic Thunder. Uh, Scarlett Johansson was somebody who really wanted to play the role of Black Widow. I had not 
imagined her as an action hero. I'd seen her more as a beautiful leading lady or a damsel in distress, but not as an action hero. But she, uh, she said, yeah, I always loved her as an actress. And she said that she would work very hard. She dyed her hair red to show me what it would look like. And she, she said she would work very hard to uh, train herself. And she really wanted the opportunity. And we, we, we made the leap, and she did a, a tremendous job. She worked harder than anybody in the cast. She was doing wire work, fight choreography, acrobatics, everything. She wanted to do as many of her own stunts as she could. And she was fearless and tireless. And she got herself into fantastic shape. She wears a you know a very uh, you know uh, you know exciting costume that matches what's in the comic books, and she looks like a comic book heroine. So she did a tremendous job as well.